the Orlando real estate market is going to crash over 30% in these coming few years, according to some people in my comments. But the recent report just came out, and so we're going to dive into those numbers, give context to those numbers to see and look at the market for what it really is. And I'll also give my thoughts on some things that I've been seeing in the market kind of in the field myself that is very interesting if you're out there as a prospective buyer or seller. Let's get into it. All right, so you guys know the drill. I'm gonna be up in the top left corner while we run through these stats. Inventory month over month is up 3.5%. So homes are staying longer, but what is really interesting is the inventory year over year is up 109.3%, almost 110% jump in inventory compared to this time last year. Just a lot of homes on the market compared to where we once were. Not necessarily that we are in a buyer's market because we're still, and you'll see it later down on the stat sheet, 2.6 months of inventory a balanced market is usually considered to be six months and so still a seller's market sellers are still having some advantages and I'll get to some personal anecdotes in a second but it is a lot more than we had before which is a good thing now going down the list you see that new listings are down 8.3 percent and down over 20 percent year over year and I talked about this in my previous market update video but I did say actually let me just run back the clip while I do believe that there's going to be more inventory in these coming months inventory will continue to increase I don't think we're going to see a huge surge of new listings because of the reasons I just previously mentioned but rather that the homes will stay on the market longer and as you know people are going to sell and buy every day regardless of what market we're in and so inventory is going to increase sales are going to be done but just at a slower pace and so yeah like I said of course transactions are going to continue to happen more people are going to sell of course there will be a need to sell there will be a need to buy in every single market but you're not going to see the people who maybe locked in two three years ago or bought a home 15 years ago and refinanced during the 2021 boom sell if they don't have have to a lot of people and this kind of goes back to a comment I saw in one of the videos about the market update where somebody said this is like 2008 2.0 2008 was people were underwater there's like an overwhelming majority of people right now have a ton of equity in their home there isn't this mad rush to sell their home and it translates to these numbers we're down 8.3 percent in new listings and we're down almost 23 percent compared to this time last year now if we look at new contracts we're down 24.7 percent but even a greater difference is the year-over-year -year change which is 50.1 percent just not as much buyers in the market today as they were before last month and even greater when you look at the year over year difference now obviously that is due to interest rates affordability is less and less in terms of how much you can actually afford i did a Orlando weekly recap on this where I looked at the affordability for different counties and as you can see the price for an affordable house is way below the average price of the house in each given county and so that's a real issue right there for everybody but even more so for the first time home buyer category and I have a crazy story about something that I've experienced over the past week and a half in regards to that price bracket in Horizon West so stay tuned for that but yeah affordability is not as high as it used to be here in Orlando interest rates are up recently we got some great news for the housing market as it went down back into the sixes and if that trend will continue well that is to be determined but it will be really good if it does so as it gives you guys more buying power if you're out there looking to buy yourself a house and also for a seller you're gonna have more buyers looking at your house because they can now afford it <laughs> so that's really cool if we look down at the pendings it kind of continues the trend of new contracts we're down 24% there and 43.3% year over year on those stats. closed sales traded sideways we were 2717 last month we're 2716 last month so really not much difference there although it's down over 20 percent year over year and although that's a negative number it's really a positive in my eyes like comparing everything to 2021 might give you a false sense of comparison because 2021 was an anomaly it was the craziest time period in history for the housing market um I guess besides from 2008, but um, in terms of just like the frenzy that it spurred with the historically low interest rates. And so comparing the massive amount of volume that happened in 2021 to what we're seeing now and then saying, oh, this is bad isn't necessarily a good thing. I think we're returning to normalcy, which is good overall for the health of the market. But for my crash buddies, guys predicting the 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, well, I actually never saw 60%, uh, but I have seen a lot of people comment, the 30 to 40 to 50% crash. Sorry to report to you today, that is not the case for this month. The average price is up 4%, but even 
not as important as the average price because that can be skewed by say an abnormally large purchase price so say we had you know you know how averages work guys so the median price though traded sideways zero percent increase zero percent decrease it just kind of stayed the same at 365 we're up 12.3 percent year over year from 325 to the 365 like i just mentioned and if you're curious maybe you watched a previous video about the market update where we were up about 14 percent and now we're up 12.3 well that's because last year september it was 318 somewhere around there now it's up to 325 while our average price or sorry our median price for this year kind of traded the same over those same consecutive months which kind of gives the difference between that 14 percent increase to now 12.3 percent just to clarify. And so yeah, I can't speak for the rest of the US, although I'll give you a quick antidote just to kind of prove what I'm saying here, which is I have a client buying in Winter Garden, selling in Texas, Austin, Texas, and the market there is down way more than it is here. Why? Because real estate markets are local, they're different. And so while it's good to look at national news and CNN and Fox and whatever your favorite news outlet of choice is, to get an overall overview of what the economy is doing, when it comes to real estate markets, you really have to dive deep into that specific specific market to really see what it's doing because while some areas are dropping 10 to 20 percent as you can see here we essentially traded sideways on our median price and we're still up 12.3 percent year over year you guys can see it you can watch the videos back if there's a price drop i'll talk about it i'll be very open and transparent about what's going on in the market at any time whether it's good or bad because the whole thing or the whole purpose of this is to keep you well informed but um, I'm not a part of the mass hysteria that everything is going to fall out of the sky, at least for Orlando. That's all I'm talking about. When I talk about the real estate market, I am talking about Orlando. And so Orlando is still doing pretty strong. We're still pretty healthy. So I think my position has been pretty consistent in terms of when it's the best time to buy or sell for you, which the answer is number one. It's when you're already enabled to. There is no like perfect time in history. This timing, the market thing, I talked about this on my Instagram, is the only realtor cash phrase you'll ever hear me co-sign. And it's time in the market is better than timing the market. I don't know, 1970s was the best time to buy real estate or 1950s. But as far as making a decision right now, I think you need to sit down and say, okay, where do I plan to live for the next six to 12 years? Is this gonna be the area that I plan to live in for the next six to 12 years? Okay, if so, then the next six to 12 months is very much not relevant. It's not as relevant as say, if you were planning to move in two years or you weren't sure maybe because of a job situation, that's not secure yet. In those cases, I'd happily tell you to probably wait it out and see what happens. But if you're planning on staying in an area for a long time, real estate goes up over time. And for Orlando, with all the developments coming in here, obviously you guys know my opinion. I'm a realtor, sure, but I'm also a big believer in Orlando. And I told you I was gonna tell you a crazy story, but before we do that, let's just kind of finish out these numbers. And so the average days on market for homes in here in Orlando went up from 31 days to 38 days. Still great, you can sell your house in about a little bit over a month. Not bad instead of two days, I'm sorry. Two days, days are gone but a month is still, again, really good. And we're up 3.6% month over month in terms of months of supply from 2.53 to 2.62. We're up almost 190% year over year, a lot more inventory on the market, but still not as much for a balanced market. Now, let's get into the story. So I was checking out some townhomes in the Horizon West area. I don't wanna mention the builder, for whatever reason, I don't know if this is bad or not, but obviously if you reach out, I'll probably tell you anyway. So, but a nice builder, great community that I was really hyped for and still am. And they also had some really good prices on those townhomes in the high threes. Some of them were actually kind of closer to the mid threes um, in the initial phase. And so we were very excited looking for two clients of mine, one that wanted to live there and one that I also wanted to buy as an investment to rent out and just kind of ride that equity gain over the next 10 years or so. And uh, so I showed up and I was like, okay, let's get some more info here. And then they were like, sorry, an investor bought all the townhomes in the community. They're all gone, done, so finished. And so I made the Instagram story and I basically talked about how the long-term thinkers are in the marketplace. And so while everybody's caught up in the frenzy of, oh, interest rates are high, which again, legitimate, it is obviously a lot more unaffordable for a buyer currently. The payment is way higher than it would be two, three years ago. But I also think people need to start looking at, okay, again, long-term perspective. When in doubt, zoom out. What are you planning to do for the next six to seven to eight to nine to 10 plus years? Because that is what these investors are looking at when they buy these large amount of homes now, all of those homes are probably gonna be a rental, but apart from you know making this probably mostly rentals, it, what it's also doing is taking inventory out of a already stricken inventory market. Yes, our inventory is up, 
month over month and year over year a dramatic amount, but it's still less than what we need. And so my thing is if you're a buyer out there, you're on the fence, maybe you're financially prepared, but you're really waiting for that perfect moment. Again, that mid 2020, late 2020, even early 2021 moment to pop up again, I'd say, let's stop doing that let's look at what your long-term goals are and then let's see what options are available to you it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to be presented with the perfect opportunity but there are more opportunities and i know a lot of people feel the hurt or the regret of not buying in the 2020 market where you had that 2.7 percent interest rate and prices weren't as high as they are today feel that that is true that's probably a really bad <laughs> missed opportunity but also be thankful that you didn't have to compete and look at the list price as a starting price and have to bid 50 100 i saw houses go four hundred thousand dollars over asking price definitely pros and cons to every market but you should know your options and if you don't know your options and you're curious you're maybe looking to buy or sell a home here in orlando i'd love to partner with you as your real estate advisor your real estate agent so you can reach out to me by email text or call or you could book a time through calendly all of which will be in the description below. Really thank you again for watching and I uh, hope to see you on the next one, right? Yeah, let's take on it. All right, take care.